Michael B. Jordan, this comes out of your incredible passion, your commitment to narrating a story that has often been marginalized in this culture, uh, one that is difficult to tell because it involves trauma and tragedy, and yet enormous hopefulness as the audience has just seen. Tell us in your mind, in your opinion, why it was so important for you to bring this project uh, to the screen to make it such a compelling story and what it is that motivated you to do it in the first place. Uh, <clears throat> I think for me, uh, when I first I had the pleasure and the honor to uh, read the book and uh, watch his TED talk, I was really embarrassed. I didn't know that much about him. I didn't know that much about his work um, and his journey. He and I kind of took that person. I took it as a personal responsibility to kind of run towards his his message, run towards his <clears throat> his purpose. He's dedicated 40 years of his life to to fighting this cause. And you know, for me, using my platform, using the opportunities that, that I've been given uh, to take that story to the masses, to get as many people as possible to see the story. Because maybe you might be able to feel the same things that we've all felt getting a chance to get to know Brian, getting a chance to, to know his work from the inside out. Um, he's an extremely important person. Uh, and uh, and yeah, you know, for me, it was the like first time I get a chance to really use my production company in this type of way to uh, put things together to get to the <laughs> Excuse me. To team up with Warner Brothers, you know, incredible uh, you know, partners to uh, the adopt the inclusion writer, you know, along with you know, Outlier Society. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a huge deal for me. It made sense across the board. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was really important for me to tell the story. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Fox. Um. <laughs> you make you feel incredible, don't you? This young man hailing all the way from Toronto, Texas. <laughs> the dichotomy of his dubiousness is once again the rectified. <laughs> MGB, where are you? Is that in the picture? <laughs> my brother, my brother and friend, you, um, the, the, the interaction between you and Michael B. Jordan in this film is Miles Davis, John Coltrane. Oh. It's, it's, that level, it's, it's that level of interplay, of dialogue, of respect, and yet trading off of each other. Um, you're acknowledged, along with many others on this panel, as among the greatest actors uh, of your generation. Tell us why, you know, how as an actor uh, it feels for you to bring such an important, often neglected story to the screen and why it was important for you to play the role, the lead role of Walter McMillan, Johnny D. Well, is you know, first of all, thank you for that. And I have to say to this young man right here, I credit him because you think about a person who just came off the biggest movie in his career. I mean, the box office speaks for itself, but yet still he would call and say, hey man, I really want to make sure that we take this up a nice. I don't want to just be known uh, as that big box office star. And I was, first of all, humbled that, that I was allowed to be able to work with him. And I always say this, I said, I said, Michael, what's interesting about you is that you've already laid the groundwork for movies like this. We already understand when you made us weep in, in Fruitville Station. And, and I, and my, and, and I remember watching that movie with a few of us, with some really solid dudes, watching Fruitville Station and your performance and there's some guys that say they don't cry. And, and watching them, you know, that moment where it was, you. I, my homie sitting next to him, and you just hear, <laughs> and then you look over, he's chewing his gum hard, like. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and although we laughed, it was, it was setting you up for something great, because you can go off and do something as big as Black Panther, this Black Panther at the same time. Even in Black Panther playing Killmonger, he had a narrative that we, that we cheered for. Even though he was a villain, he was the most he was the most intriguing and informative villain for all of us. So coming to this movie, um, it was great to be able to work with him and see that he and, and Destin and all the work that they put into uh, the movie before we even started 
it was it was time to play. And you can see it on the screen. And I told him, I said, when people when when people see it, when, when regular people see this, they're gonna marvel at all the work that you've uh, put into. And I think that they will be moved by this uh, incredible relationship between Brian and uh, uh, Walter McMillan and us bringing it to them. And I, I, I really I really am excited about how it's how it's played out. And it's been wonderful. And, and, and thank you to everyone who's 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 watching it with an eye of, of openness and a, a credit to, to, to Destin. The fact that you took a, a story like this, because there's going to be millions of black stories told. And they all are significant. But sometimes it could be too much. This sometimes, and we maybe miss um, certain things. I think the way you guys crafted this movie, everybody is, it, it feels like a humanitarian. It feels like a, a human story. And, and we tested the movie. <laughs> we, tested the last thing. we tested the movie in front of an all-black audience, and it was 97. But we were like, wow, that's wonderful. We, we hoped that that would be uh, the case. But then we tested it in front of an all-white audience, and you know, I was like, man, what they say? <laughs> and it tested at a 98. So it lets you know that the people up here on stage and Mike and Dee, yes, and everybody involved, I think they really got it right. Right, right. We're aiming for a Latinx audience of 99. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Miss Brie Larson. I mean, superhero. <laughs> marvel at your capacity. Uh, look, look, it's hard up here. It's hard up here. Calm down. All right? But since I've been going with, I mean, singers, I guess maybe Sarah Vaughn. That kind of Sarah Vaughn poetic intensity, right, where Sarah sang, I saw her right before she died at the Blue Note, with that kind of internal ferocity. And that's what you bring um, to this part. And what's interesting is that in a film where African American people have become victimized by a system, you as a white woman, both playing a real historical character, um, you know, fit in, use the privileges that have been accorded to you in defense of these vulnerable people. And I think that's extremely important right about now for such a story uh, to be communicated, such a narrative. Uh, to be expressed. So talk to us about the importance of the film from your perspective. Ooh, that is, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, my answer's not going to be really too many streams to play that <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, I, filmmaking is a, a huge part of my activism. It's, there's so much that I do behind the camera that is of so much importance to me, but it has to then be on screen as well. And I couldn't think of a better way to show my support and allyship than to do this role, to play somebody who has dedicated their life to this type of work, and to also be the true, like, most basic definition of supporting character, um, to really just be there to support, to listen, and to be there for Michael, mostly. I mean, that's who knows my scenes are with. And, and how all of this came about was Destin asking me, if I wanted to be part of it, my question was, does Michael want me there? <laughs> and, it was, and luckily it was, yeah. So, it, you know, for me it's about not just, just supporting these incredible people and being humbled enough to show up and be a student and to say that I am here to listen, I am here to do what you need, but no more than that. And I have the opportunity of not just being in scenes of so much profound value to me that have changed me, but to also be in rooms when we weren't filming that Jamie so kindly led, to hear stories, to hear stories of what it was like for Jamie growing up. These are things that will stick with me for the rest of my life, and I felt so honored to be led into that. Um, due to Michael's inclusion writer, it was extremely diverse on set, so it wasn't just on camera. I can't say enough how honored I was to be seen as a safe person in that space 
and um, to use this film and as my own personal opportunity to say to other white actors out there, please accept the opportunity to be of support to the people of color around you. It's the best thing you can do for yourself, for your career, for your life. Um, and yeah, so that, that is my goal. That's what I was here to do. And I continue to be a student of Jamie Foxx and Brian Stevenson, and I hope to be one for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, very nice, very nice.